Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome today. It is going to be an amazing day. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Oh my goodness, you are going to absolutely love today. The Lord has just given me a word of encouragement that will strengthen you and cause you to run the race. It is about paying the price, counting the cost. What is amazing is in my memories just yesterday was the Luke 14, 28 training, the picture of the little tag as in relation to the first watchman training God had me bring out about counting the cost and paying the price. And we're going to look at areas in which the enemy is a thorn in your flesh and many times it will come through those that are under you or are familiar with you that are bringing judgment and they're on and in relationship with you, but they're just being used of the enemy because of the issue of their own heart where they are judging you unconsciously, subconsciously. And we're going to look at that a little deeper today as you go from glory to glory to glory. Amen. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, Linda. Hey, Katie. Hey, Donna. God bless y'all. And I'm just going to be real, real with y'all today. Hey, Stephanie. Man, God says this is for you, Stephanie. I'm just going to be real, real with y'all today. Yesterday in my heart, and it was in my memories two days ago, where I asked people to get off my wall. If they are just thinking poorly about me, just get off my wall. And it was specifically with people that uh, were coming against me on their wall and stuff like that. And, you know, I just, it is such a vexation for me. Hey, Donna, this is for you, sister. It is such a vexation for me. And their participation on my wall vexes me because of the attacks of the enemy in their members where they are projecting their own badness onto me and in relation to just their relationship with me. We're going to look at how to have better relationships and how to endure relationships. Thank you, Miss Donna. Hey, Michelle, God bless you. How to endure relationships where people are used as a thorn of Satan to buffet your flesh. And we're going to look at this with Paul the Apostle right after uh, 2 Corinthians 11. is 2 Corinthians 12. And in 2 Corinthians 11, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for 2 Corinthians 11 being read to the church of Corinth. Or even when Paul was writing it and to feel his heart coming out. It's such a monologue that I would just love to see. And it is, you know... Him being vexed by all of those people under the false apostles because of the rebellion in their own members where they could not endure the word of truth from Paul. And as a result, they were being used as a thorn of the messenger of Satan to buffet Paul and he had to endure the suffering. And so we're going to look at a couple of verses. We're going to look at Ezekiel 9. We're going to look at... Also, 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 12, and we're going to look at Matthew 7 because there are so many times that you will have people in your life and you have to have patient endurance and long suffering, even as Jesus had with Judas. Oh my goodness. As Jesus had with Judas, as he endured that which Judas had in his members. And Christ still stood and established himself in love and did not deviate from the love of God. Amen. There are going to be tests in your life where you are just going to be so stretched and you are going to want to lash out. I'm just being real, real. You're going to want to lash out. Uh, you're going to, especially again, those that are under you or are our or are familiar with you. And I'm going to use some examples in the past of where God reconciled a spiritual daughter that was very much in rebellion with me and would come to our meetings and the spirit of Leviathan through the woman that I asked to leave our meeting who was stirring up dissension 
and turning so many people against me. And they would sit there in the meeting and they were there just to be a messenger of Satan. They were not there because they were led by the Spirit. They were led by a Spirit, all right, but it wasn't Holy Spirit. And so there are going to be those times, and I'm going to give you some wisdom today by the Holy Spirit to just let Holy Spirit possess you. Because there are so many times on my wall where I see <laughs> this dissension. And I want to just reach through the screen, Robin's flesh, and I'm just being real, okay? Don't think that I am this super saint. I am just, you know, Saint Robin. I'm not. I am Robin, chief sinner, who knows that only by the grace of God go I, amen? And I love to be transparent and vulnerable so that you know what I've overcome and that you can overcome it too. And God is having me do it because some of you out there are dealing with this. And the Lord has really told me to bring this forward today in this meeting. And so years ago, when this particular spiritual daughter that I had loved and just mentored in the Lord was being influenced by another woman in our ministry, the one that I mentioned a couple days ago, Carla, that had the spirit of Leviathan. Now, Leviathan is about the message. Praise God, Donna. God told me it was for you, Donna. Donna Born. Let me just clarify that. There's Miss Donna, Donna Bryson, and there's Donna Born. But Donna Born, this is for you. Um, and oh my goodness, it was... She would just sit in the front row of our meetings and she would just be like this and just looking at me and I'm saying such rebellion in her heart. And those that have rebellion in their heart, they are going to have the appearance of godliness, but underneath they are in rebellion and they are going to be rebellious against truth and they're going to want to confront it. And you have to resist the temptation to respond in your flesh. You have to have love and no matter what, walk in love. So as I was walking through this many years ago, and again, it was a spiritual daughter and I've had people under me and they just get in rebellion. They are in rebellion and their emphasis in being a part of my life at that moment is just to be a thorn and just to be rebellious towards the Holy Spirit in me and to resist God. And it, like I said, just even the other day in my memories was, please get off of my wall. If you think negative about me, just get off of my wall if you think I'm not from God. And I just felt the Holy Spirit leading me two days ago to post that again. Get off of my wall. If you don't think I'm from God, just get off, okay? Because I don't want that kind of stuff on my wall. And so from time to time, I will message people that I know are in this space. And other people that are in this space, I'm quiet until God has me confront them. And I just confront them in love and I'll and and I will go to Rich just to let you know. I'll say Rich, this is happening. I want to walk in sound wisdom. I want your opinion as well. This is Rich is my husband. And Rich will say, absolutely Robin, they are doing exactly what you're per picking up and perceiving and discerning. And so, you know, when I confront them, they are in total denial and I just give them the benefit of the doubt, and I just let them know, well, I understand that you're saying this, but there are no ifs, ands, or buts <coughs> about this issue that even my own husband can pick this up, but I love you anyway. But there is a point where you can kind of endure, and as you endure, <laughs> there's grace and mercy, but there's also a time to confront. So the spiritual daughter that eventually I did address before I did confront her and address her. And this was probably about 2011, about this time. Uh, I was in a Sunday school class at this time, and she was in my ministry. And I was in a Sunday school class at the church that I left that persecuted me for the very last time. And in the Sunday school class, she was sitting behind me, and her foot kicked my behind and I was not in a good place with her. Okay. I'm just going to be real, real. 
Her being at my meetings was a thorn in my flesh because it was right out rebellion. And remember, rebellion is witchcraft. Witchcraft is rebellion. And so, uh, rebellion is witchcraft. And so, when she kicked my behind, I wanted to turn around and Robin in the flesh wanted to just let her have it and say, let me tell you one thing. I am sick and tired of your mocking spirit, of you attending my meetings and coming to my house and coming to my meetings at the location we're having meetings and being just a misfit and in rebellion. And, I, you know, that's what Robin's flesh wanted to do. But you know those Chinese movies, okay? Those Chinese movies where it's dubbed over in English, where they're going like this and it's Chinese and they've dubbed over it in English. That's what it was like after she kicked my behind. She's behind me. We're in Sunday school. She kicks my behind. And I really felt like she did it on purpose. But oh, help me, Jesus. The Holy Spirit took over Robin. Thank you, Lord. And God would not let Robin act in her flesh. And I said, I love you. And it was like, I love you. And I was like, God, I did not say that. You said that. Amen, Sabrina. I did not say that, God. And God said, Robin, I took over your words, words and I dubbed what you wanted to say. And it did not come out that way. I kid you not. That was like what it was like. And I just said, God, help me. And finally, shortly thereafter, I met with her. And what's so funny is she is one of the most loyal people to me now. She is so loyal as the day is long. And she has been loyal ever since 2011. And, uh, you know, I met with her and I said, you are an absolute rebellion. I'm going to give you scriptures. And I'm going to let you know that you can either get deliverance and I'll walk you through it and stay in this ministry. Or you can leave and no longer be a part of this ministry. But you cannot be in my ministry, mine and riches, God's firewall, if you're going to be in rebellion. And uh, like scripture says in, script, in scripture, if there is any bitter root, then uproot it lest it contaminate the many. That is uh, Hebrews twelve fifteen. that if there is any bitter root in the ministry, to uproot it, lest it contaminate the many. And those that have bitterness and are in rebellion to God, they participate, but their participation is, is to do little things to dig at you and to not be genuine, not authentic, not loving, but just to be a thorn, okay? And so we're going to go to a few scriptures here. And let's go to 2 Corinthians 12. And let's look at 2 Corinthians 12 as we look at Paul the Apostle. And before that, let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. Because a lot of people don't understand 2 Corinthians 12. But just remember, everything in the Word is in context. And 2 Corinthians 11 is right before 2 Corinthians 12. Okay? Okay. Those that are under a false anointing that are the rebellious church, which I've preached in scripture, the rebellious church. And let me pull that up. And I've got that uh, particular, um, the, the rebellious house. I got that message that I preached, but make sure you listen to the message that I posted on my Facebook wall today, wake up, don't go to the board meeting. Sabrina's already heard it. God's told me last week to post that video up, that teaching, and it is one of the most powerful teachings. I'm telling you, it has so much freedom. So in Ezekiel 2, 5 and 6, through, well, Ezekiel 2, 5 through chapter, through verse 8. So let's look at these particular scriptures, and then I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 11, so let's look at verse 5 of Ezekiel 2. And they, well, let's just start in verse 1. There's not many verses in this particular chapter of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 2. And he said to me, Ezekiel, son of man, son of man, stand upon your feet and I will speak to you. 
And the Spirit entered into me when He spoke to me and set me upon my feet. And I heard Him speaking to me. And He said to me, I send you, Son of Man, to the children of Israel, to rebellious nations that have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. Even to do this, even to this very day. And the children are impudent and hard of heart. That's bitter. I send you to them and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord. And they, whether they will hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. Yet shall they know and realize that there has been a prophet among them. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. The rebellious house is a house of briars and thorns. And Micah knew this in Micah 7 because he said all of those people around him that called themselves Israel, Jews, were nothing but briars and thorns. And I'm telling you, those that are rebellious against God will be a thorn in your flesh and you have to pass this test. And they are going to be people that are familiar with you, people that you've mentored, people that have been friends, people that you've known. Familiarity breeds contempt. And the pride in their heart of Leviathan will cause them to lift themselves up against the word of truth and to speak in their own heart against you and dishonor you. Oh my goodness, I can sense this is a word for someone here today. This is Holy Spirit. And I just want to say, God, if there are people on my wall, on the people's walls here, and I know Donna Bourne, you're one of them, that need to get off the wall. Get off my wall, like Nehemiah. Get off my wall, rebellious house. This is the wall of God. <laughs> Amen. And I'm building the wall. And all those are, that are trying to tear down the wall of God that's in my life and your life, get off the wall in Jesus' name. Woo! Don't you feel that, Donna Bourne? Woo! Hallelujah. And they, verse 5, whether they will hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall they know and realize that there has been a prophet among them. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of the words Though briars and thorns are all around you and you dwell and sit among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. And you shall speak my words to them, whether they will hear or refuse to hear, for they are most rebellious. As for you, son of man, hear what I say to you, be not rebellious." Be not like the rebellious house. Open your mouth. Eat what I give you. And when I looked, behold, a hand was stretched out to me. And behold, a scroll of a book was in it. And he spread it before me. And it was written within and on the back. And written on it were words of lamentation and mourning. And so now we see the briars and thorns. And now we're going to go to... First, Second Corinthians 11, and we're going to see the prelude to the thorns that Paul is dealing with, and it is the thorns of the rebellious house of who those who call themselves Christians, but they are rebellious, and they are in rebellion, and they are fighting the message that God has given Paul. So now, this is in the Word of God, okay? This is in the Word of God. And this is chapter 11, 2 Corinthians. I wish you would bear with me while I indulge in a little so-called foolishness. Do bear with me. 
For I am zealous for you with a godly eagerness and a divine jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But now I am fearful, lest that even as the serpent beguiled Eve by his cunning, so your minds may be corrupted and seduced from wholehearted and sincere, pure devotion to Christ. For you are even readily to endure it if a man comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preached. In other words, you can tolerate the thing that allows you to stay in sin, but you cannot tolerate a true apostolic word of God that would come and rebuke you in the word of truth that would operate on you and would be good for chastisement and reproof so that you can turn away from the world and turn towards God. For you Seem readily to endure it if a man comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preached, or if you receive a different spirit. Remember, Holy Spirit had me start out that another spirit at that time before my spiritual daughter was delivered had led her to our meetings, but it was not the Holy Spirit. It was another spirit for her to be a thorn in my flesh. But thanks be to God in Christ Jesus, she got delivered. Amen. Verse uh, 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 verse 4 again. For you seem readily to endure it if a man comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preached. Or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you once received. Or a different gospel from the one you then received and welcomed. You tolerate all of that well enough. Yet I consider myself as in no way inferior to these precious extra super false apostles. But even if I am unskilled... In speaking, yet I am not unskilled in knowledge. I know what I am talking about. We have made this evident to you in all things. Verse 7, 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 11. But did I perhaps make a mistake and do you wrong in debasing and cheapening myself so that you might be exalted and enriched in dignity and honor and happiness by preaching you God's gospel without expense to you. Other churches I have robbed by accepting more than their share of support for my ministry from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and ran short financially, I did not burden any of you for what I lacked was abundantly made up by the brethren who came from Macedonia. So I kept myself from being burdensome to you in any way and will continue to keep myself from being so. As the truth of Christ is in me, this my boast of independence shall not be disbarred, silenced, or checked in the regions of Acacia. And why? Because I do not love you, do not have a preference for you, wish you well, and regard your welfare. God perceives and knows that I do. But what I do, I will continue to do. For I am determined to maintain this independence in order to cut off the claim of those who would like to find an occasion, an incentive to claim that in their boasted mission, they work on the same terms that we do. For such men are false apostles, spurious counterfeits, deceitful workmen, masquerading as apostles, special messengers of Christ the Messiah. And it is no wonder... For Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light, so it is no surprising if his servants also masquerades as ministers of righteousness, but their end will correspond with their deeds. I repeat then, let no one think I've lost my wits, but even if you do, then bear with that witless man so that I too may boast a little. What I say by way of this confident boasting, I say not with the Lord's authority by inspiration, but as it were in pure witlessness. In other words, Paul is saying, look, I'm being a fool and just expect me to say these foolish things. But he's really inspired by the Holy Spirit and he's confronting their rebellion. Now watch this. What I say by confident, uh, verse 18, for since many boast of worldly things, again, this is exposing those that are attached to the world. Those that are attached to the world will be in rebellion to truth. They will confront issues within their own heart of bitterness and use it 
to be a thorn of the message of truth and those that bear the message of truth. But let me encourage you, those of y'all who are bearing with thorns, breathe, 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 and pray, 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 and fast, 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 and let the word of the Lord revive you. Amen. Because you're, you're paying the price. Luke 14, 28. You're counting the cost of the anointing. Okay. You're paying the price. And this is what it looks like. Amen. Verse 17 of 2 Corinthians 11. What I say by way of confident boasting, I say not with the Lord's authority by inspiration, but as it were in pure witlessness. For since many boast of worldly things and according to the flesh, I will glory, I will boast also. For you are readily and gladly bear with foolish, since you are all so smart and wise yourselves. In other words, you have surpassed me, your teacher. That's what Paul is saying. You've been too familiar with me. You've gotten too cozy with my letters. And you just don't realize that pride in your members and the bitterness in your soul has caused you to put me in contempt when I'm bringing you the word of the Lord. And this will happen in your lives with those that get familiar with you. That is why when I work with ministers, I work with a few ministers in individual coaching, and I'm always telling them, you have to have a certain position with people so that familiarity doesn't breed contempt. Amen. So let's go to verse 19. For you are readily and gladly bear with the foolish, since you are also smart and wise yourselves. For you endure it if a man assumes control over your souls. This goes with the message that I brought you the other day. And what's interesting is after I brought that message Saturday morning about picking up your cross and about knowing Christ Jesus crucified, we went to my parents' house for an early Father's Day celebration. And there was a picture of a red Jeep with a personalized tag, one cross. And on the back was a sticker, Salt Life. Well, yes, we are the salt and the light and that is the life of Christ. And we are about one cross, one man, one Savior. Amen. So let's look at this ne next. Because this is about where false apostles, like I was speaking about that person the other day. It's a false apostle that has Jezebel, which is control in a male gender. Just like control in a female gender, I call Jezebel. And I just call for me, okay? I call it Jezebel when it's in a man. Where a false apostle is trying to bring fear to control you and make you a slave unto man. So let's look at verse 19. For you are readily and gladly bear with foolish, since you are so smart and wise yourself. For you endure it if a man assumes control over your souls and makes you slaves, or devours your substance, spends your money, and preys upon you, deceives and takes advantage of you, or is arrogant and puts on airs or strikes you in the face. To my discredit, I must say, we've shown ourselves too weak. For you too show such tolerance of us, for us to do so strong, courageous things like that to you. But whatever any person is bold and dares to boast, mind you, I'm speaking in this foolish way. I am, I also am bold and dare to boast. They are Hebrews, so am I. They are Israelites, so am I. They are descendants of Abraham, so am I. Are they ministering servants of Christ the Messiah? I'm talking like one beside himself, but I am more with far more extensive and abundant labors, with far more imprisonments, beaten, countless stripes, frequently to the point of death. In other words, He's saying, I am way more persecuted than the false apostles that have made your slaves a soul. Five times I received the hands of the Jews, 40 lashes. Three times I've been beaten with rods. Remember I did that thigh rod the other day. Once I was stoned. Three times I've been aboard a ship, wrecked at sea a whole night, and a day I've spent adrift on the deep. 
many times on journeys exposed to perils from rivers, perils from bandits, perils from my own nation, perils from Gentiles, perils in the city, perils in the desert, perils in the sea, perils from those posing as believers, but destitute of Christian knowledge and piety, and toil and hardship watching often through sleepless nights and hunger and thirst, frequently driven to fasting by want and cold and exposure and lack of clothing. And besides those things that are without, there is a daily inescapable pressure of my care and anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak? And I do not feel his weakness. Who is made to stumble and fall and have his faith hurt? And I am not on fire with sorrow and indignation. If I must boast, I will boast of things that show my infirmity. So this is to prepare you for the thorns that we're about to see in 2 Corinthians 12. This is the chapter before for you to understand that the thorns of Paul are those that hold him in contempt whom he served and ministered and have become too familiar with him that they don't appreciate him and take him for granted and they dishonor him and they are under false apostles who have made a slave of their soul and because of that knowledge that those false apostles have, they think they've arrived and they show themselves <clears throat> contemptuous against Paul. If I must boast, verse 30, of things that show my infirmity, of things which I am made weak and contemptible in the eyes of my opponents, the God and the Father of Lord Jesus Christ knows he who is blessed and to be praised more that I do not lie. In Damascus, the city governor acting under King Aretas guarded the city of Damascus on purpose to arrest me. And I was actually let down in a rope basket or hamper through a window in the wall and I escaped through his fingers. Okay, now we're getting ready for 2 Corinthians 12. And God wants to get this message to you. There are going to be people in your life that are going to be familiar with you. And at times they're going to have moments. At times you're going to have moments. But repent, turn from the world, turn towards heaven, God, and yield your members to him so that pride isn't in your heart to think of yourselves more highly than you should. You should esteem others more than yourself, Hebrews 12. And so now let's look at 2 Corinthians 12, verse 1. And we're looking at the messenger of Satan sent to buffet Paul's flesh. True, there is nothing to be gained by it, but as I am obliged to boast, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. Now, Paul is saying, look, y'all keep talking about all these false apostles who have these so-called revelations, teachings, and their demonic teachings that have made a slave of your soul or another spirit preaching another Jesus and another gospel. Yet you open your mouths wide like a baby bird taking it in and it's made a slave of your soul. And the test of it is that you're bitter when the true messenger of God comes along to give a word of truth and you resist it and you keep your mouth close to it and not only that, on top of that, you are insolent in action to show yourself that way. Woo! Hallelujah. Verse 1 again in 2 Corinthians 12. True, there is nothing to be gained by it, but as I'm obliged to boast. In other words, Paul's saying, you're making me boast. I'm obliged to. So let me continue, okay? I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man... I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up to the third heaven. And I know that this man, whether in the body or away from the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise and he heard utterances beyond the power of man 
to put into words, which is man is not permitted to utter. Of this same man's experience, I will boast. But of myself personally, I will not boast except as regards to my infirmities, my weaknesses. Should I desire to boast, I shall be... N- I shall not be a witless braggart, for I shall be speaking the truth. But I abstain from it, so that no one may form a higher estimate of me than is justified what he sees in me or hears from me, and to keep me from being puffed up and too much elated by exceeding greatness, preeminence of these revelations, there was given a thorn, a splinter in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to rack and buffet and harass me to keep me from being excessively exalted. Three times I called upon the Lord and besought him about this and begged that it might depart from me. But he said to me, my grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled, completed, show themselves most effective in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities that the strength and the power of Christ, the Messiah, may rest. Yes, pitch a tent and dwell over me. So for the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and take pleasure in infirmities, insults, hardships, persecutions, perplexities, and distresses. For when I am weak in human strength, then I am truly strong, able, and powerful in divine strength. Saints, this is where we're going to end. You are going to go through such contemptuous assignments of Satan where those that get familiar with you and have bitterness in their members will be in contempt of the message you bring and of what you represent of Christ Jesus. They have a form of godliness. They are denying the power of it. And so in this process, it causes you to be all the more weaker You still confront, but in that process, you know that greater is Christ Jesus in you than he that is in the world. And that those that are bound under the auspices of deception, where in their own heart, they want to feel good. They want things that are so easy. They don't want a hard message. They don't want truth. They're in rebellion to it. They are going to be thorns that will be in your life like Paul is speaking on. And you have to breathe and you have to know God is in control and his grace is sufficient. Praise God, Donna Bourne. His grace is sufficient. Now, let me end with Matthew 7. And God wanted me to bring this message because, oh my goodness, I can tell you through the years, there have been many times where people have been in the ministry and I have been so vexed, so vexed. And their presence in the ministry or on Facebook, their presence was so much a thorn. And there have been so many times I have wanted to block them, unfriend them. And I've cried out to God, God, what do I do? I've talked with my husband to make sure I get wisdom. Because Robin's flesh wants to just unfriend and block them and unfollow them. But Holy Spirit says, Robin, this is a thorn. This is a thorn. And it's just to keep you humble. It is just to remind you of the sufficiency of Christ, of the power of God, and that as you go higher, you have to go lower. And it is better to look like a witless braggart, like Paul says, and look foolish to other people than 
as he says, to look so altogether put together with words of persuasion. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, that when I came amongst you, I came and that I choose to know nothing except for Christ Jesus and him crucified. And when I came amongst you, I didn't come with persuasive, plausible words. I came amongst you in fear and in trembling and in the power of the Holy Spirit in a demonstration of the Holy Spirit where those words stirred up holiness and the members of those who listen to that word. Saints, that's what it's about, is pressing through your thorns and knowing that it's the price for the anointing. And so many times, God is going to see how you handle the thorns, that you're going to want to feel like cutting people off. And there's times that you do cut people off. I'm not saying that you don't. You put up boundaries. And I wrote extensively about that. And at his feet in chapter four, boundaries. And boundaries are to protect the anointing. That's what boundaries are for. And so you do have times like that. But there are times just like Paul had, Paul the apostle, Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 2, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1, where they preached to rebellious houses and they brought the word of the Lord. There have been many times that I've preached at different churches And there are about three different churches that I've gone to to preach at that have closed down. And I remember one woman that had been heavily in our ministry, got a lot of deliverance and healing. She became good friends with me. And this was back in 2016 that this happened. And she became good friends with me. And I was invited to go preach at this church in her area in Alabama And she was bothered because she knew of the rebellion in that church. And she didn't want me to go preach in this church. Now, this shows you how God will cut people off of you. I I just need to share this. And I think Donna Bourne, this is for you as well, uh, is that. So this woman, I'm telling you, she was heavily demonically oppressed when she came into our meetings back in 2012. Heavily demonically oppressed. Massively. And I went to a church in her area years ago in central Alabama, about two hours away and from where I live. And I ministered, and she was one of the women at that women's meeting in that church. And that woman was delivered from many demons. Now, understand, Holy Spirit has me cast out demons all the time, but that is signs that follow a believer. It doesn't mean I'm a deliverance minister, just like... When Holy Spirit does healing through the gift of healing, it doesn't mean I'm a healer. It means God is a healer and God is a deliverer. Amen. And so this woman had been delivered from so many demonic things. And this is a whole other woman from my spiritual daughter. And this woman did not repent. And so no longer is involved in our ministry, but she's on my wall. And so I just pray for her still. And so she got so mad at me because God was sending me to this rebellious house. And there are times that he sends me to rebellious churches. And the ones that do, they end up shutting down shortly after I go preach there. Where the ones that have shut down, three of them, the pastors were having an affair with a secretary or someone in the church. And uh, all of those, and the people would get mad at me. Uh, as Holy Spirit just preached a message and Holy Spirit in time would begin to show things and unfold things and people would just get all up in arms and mad with me when people started leaving this place and eventually it was exposed that the pastor was having an affair with another woman at the church and everything came out and the rebellion was in the leadership and so she thought because it was a rebellious house that I was not to go preach at it. And that is not the case because God sends the word of the Lord to rebellious houses because he wants them to repent. He loves the people. He loves the people in sin and he wants to send them a messenger so that they will repent. And so this woman turned on me and started dogging me to everybody in the area where I preached at different churches there, at different meetings, different homes. 
and just, oh my goodness, dogged me. I mean, did me so wrong and it hurt. And God said, Robin, and this is at the time I was writing the first Samuel 2, 8, Can You Handle the Truth? Watchman training with Hannah. And God was having me teach about Lucifer before the fall. He was the anointed cherub that covereth. And that word covereth means to defend, to protect, to be a defense. And so God said, Robin, when Lucifer fell and became Satan, he brought the defensiveness, self-defense to mankind. And God said, Robin, if you ever try to defend yourself, that's evidence, Song of Solomon 2, 4, that you're not under the banner of love. And so love is a divine defense and that God is your defense. And so if you feel like you need to defend yourself, then you're not under the banner of love. And so in this process, as you're dealing with thorns, you have to shift to be under the banner of love. And so God said, Robin, I don't want you to open your mouth. I don't want you to defend yourself. I just want you to love. And so as I began to love and all the hurt that was done towards me and the evil, later on, probably about six months later, I had another meeting down in Mobile, down in the Gulf Coast, which I, I used to do all the time. And I was doing another conference, and it was the first Samuel 2, 8 conference, Can You Handle the Truth? And this woman came to it. This woman that had dogged me, that had been in rebellion, that had been bitter. And it was as though Exodus 10, 19, where God sent a strong west wind to remove the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea, that God came in and removed every memory of our closeness so that it could not be used as a weapon to hurt me. So that when I met her again, it was as though I was meeting her for the very first time in my life. Because God cared so much about me that his grace was sufficient that as I endured the thorns, and Donna Bourne, this is for you, as I endured those thorns, and stayed under the banner of love and shifted and not allow my flesh to rise up and to defend as I was under that banner of love, Holy Spirit came in and removed every memory I had of this woman ever. And it was as though I never met her and God refreshed and revived me. Saints, that is grace. That is the power of grace. And as we know our infirmities, we know our weaknesses, we're able to endure the thorns, the briars, and we end up going from glory to glory as we count the cost and we run our race and we build the wall in Jesus' name. What a way to start the week off. Woo! In Jesus' name. And if you want a really good message, again, go to my Facebook and look at the post where I've gotten the comments, wake up, don't go to the board meeting. So, Lord, I just pray for each and every listener, viewer, that your breath of Holy Spirit come into them that you send a strong west wind of your Holy Spirit into their members and remove the buzzing locusts of those thorns, those briars that have contended with them by bringing grace and you cast it under the blood of Jesus that God, they are under your banner of love and they are revived and refreshed in the abundant life of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you and God loves you more. Amen.